Welcome everyone. It's Frank here from Talking God's Grace. You know, I was doing this uh, reading in First Peter chapter one, and uh, how are you finding First Peter chapter one so far in our series? It's pretty good, right? Uh, I feel like he's uh, talking to sort of new believers uh, in a way because there's a lot of good reminders about who we are or who they were as children of God, and uh, trying to. Uh, uplift their faith, build their faith, or maintain their faith, or uh, the thing that they believed in was true, not false. And why I say that is, let me ask you this question why I say this. How much does what we want to believe affect our judgment and our decisions and our actions? How much of, how much does it, take or what type of information does it take for you to make a wrong decision if if it's slightly off center that decision can have all sorts of uh, effects on your life right uh, and so in peter's uh, discussion here the reason why i say that in peter's discussion he's going to be talking in verses 13 to 16 of first peter chapter 1 there's a lot of points he brings out here one of those is our fixing our hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So this idea I want to bring out is this on hope. And I, I, and I think what I've come to appreciate in my, especially in the last five years, being a child of God, understanding this, knowing this, and slowly having... I believe revelation or truth come to me um, for me for my personal growth and understanding um, which I'm just sharing with you I have come to see that there are two hopes right two two hopes running in this system there are or maybe many more than two hopes it depends which is your belief two gospels plus the more than two gospels but there's many gospels that are out there but there's only one true gospel there's only one true hope as the apostle paul said there's only one true faith but there are many faiths right and so we're having this mixed covenant of old and new being taught by i believe people who have the best intentions and I think it's affecting the way we view our future, our hope. Our, our hope is affected. And hope is linked with truth. And I think maybe sometimes when we, if we understand that, that helps us. Because I think a lot of people have different hopes. Even people who say that they're not religious, right? I'm not saying I'm religious, but people who don't want to say that they're religious, what do they do? Well, they, they believe in evolution, right? They believe in something, though. They still ask the big questions. You know, uh, why am I here? What is the future? Where am I going? What happens when I die? Etc. Where's my loved ones? And so with people who, um, who, and you see these same people, uh, not all of them, but some of them go into to those um, astrology and other means or other new age information to to get to gain some enlightenment about their future their hope what happens to them these big questions right but paul's reassuring the believers to believe to choose not to be um, persuaded otherwise because they were facing some severe persecution and uh, and, and more was to come under Nero. And so he was trying to reassure them of their identity as a child of God, their identity in Christ, their union with Christ. This is what he was trying to establish with them. It's interesting, the Apostle Paul said this in 1 Timothy 2 Timothy, in 1 Timothy 1 4, they should not listen to stories that are not true. These only bring more questions to their minds and do not 
make their faith in God any stronger. So it's okay. You know, sometimes we get this idea that I should just listen to everything and then work it out. Maybe you shouldn't. <laughs> Have you ever thought about that? You know, I, I just stick to now the what I believe is the grace of God and my understanding. I'm not interested in what other religions think and teach on, you know, conditional salvation, conditional uh, love from God. That is Old Testament mentality. And that's not the new covenant. That's the old covenant. And so there is this mixture, though, amongst people and is affecting their minds, their faith. It's not making them any stronger in their belief in God. And I think this is very important that we must be careful not to invest uh, in every notion that comes around. We need to choose wisely and, and read the apostles and what they're saying about grace, about your total forgiveness, that you are uh, accepted and loved. You are holy, blameless. And this is what he goes on to say. So we must choose to believe, though, the apostles and the direction that they give us. Uh, and that will help then help the way we live our lives and how long we get to live as well. This is what I, I believe in. So I want to sort of bring that introduction in. And with that, I'd like to read 1 Peter chapter 1, 13 to 16 today. I'm just going to read that. I'm actually going to do this in two parts because there's so much in here. Uh, there's another section I want to cover, but I want to cover this idea of hope first. So there he goes on to say, Therefore, after reading from 1 Peter chapter 1 through to 12, he says, Therefore. So maybe you should stop this video read those verses and now we're going to catch up to 13 but i'm going to sort of head back a little bit and talk about it he says therefore prepare your minds for actions keep sober in spirit fix your hope completely on the grace to br to be brought to you at the revelation of jesus christ verse 14 as obedient children do not be conformed to the former lust which were yours in your ignorance but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. So notice there, uh, he's done this a couple of times, but he starts off the passage with, with therefore. In other words, immediately points back to what he had just said. And the reason for it in verses 3 to 7 about their living hope. He says, therefore, prepare your minds, right? Keep sober in your spirit. Fix your hope. Remember in verse 3, he said, you have a living hope. Um, but in verses 3 to 7, it's what he's saying is what's happened to them at salvation. Uh, God saw this, or God already had this in mind. Those who would believe, he even called them chosen ones, these chosen ones. Well, here it says, you were called, who were called, one who, the Holy One who called you, sorry. <laughs> but like the Holy One who called you, verse 15. So you were called by the Holy One, uh, or cho and so as chosen ones. And so by this calling of God, uh, there's a, you were sanctified, justified, washed clean of the by the Holy Spirit. And you were brought forth to be obedient, as obedient children. Not disobedient children of faith and cleansed by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ um, for our sins, past, present and future. Uh, all our sins are forgiven once for all time. So he, the Father, as Peter brings out in three verses 3 to 7, uh, we're born again, begotten. He's the one that caused us to be born again, to a living hope, uh, due to their faith in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from dead, from the dead, 
and through that to be given an incredible inheritance far beyond anything in the world for it is imperishable undefiled unfading reserved in heaven for them and guaranteed for it is guarded by god himself you cannot lose your salvation once you are born from god this is what he's saying and therefore he's saying because of all this prepare your minds for action don't be passive right keep sober in spirit um, not like a drunkard of course uh, then fix your hope completely so it is this salvation which is guaranteed in the present but as he says there will be fully revealed at the revelation of jesus christ and that is the basis of peter's encouragement that peter is building on in his his words here to these brothers and sisters so he's pointing backwards to what happened at salvation which means eternal life so preparing your minds uh, a literal translation is gird up the loins of your mind the word refers to the greek word refers to the minds with a basic sense of thought reflection ponder it is a greek word for nos or naos naos for which you which it can function as synonym referring to the mind the total inner or moral attitude the ability to think reason and understand so it's saying you know do you get it do you get what what's happened to you do you see your identity in christ as a child of god do you see that god is the one that birthed you do you see that that this you can't be touched you cannot be touched. you are totally loved unconditionally loved that's his point i think keeping sober he says then fix your hope so i'm going to sort of build on this idea about our hope i think it's very important but um obviously a lot of this is fixing your hope is this mental side right your hope of course it affects the heart because we've been given a new heart and i think it works in in new in unison together hope is the verb form of El bizo, and the word for hope and hope is a confidence in the future which is good and beneficial hope has an object a basis for confidence in the future and it will be and it will be the ability and trustworthiness of that object that determines the level of confidence all right as we're saying because uh, some people's beliefs are a little bit shaky at the moment some people don't know what what their hope is they're a little bit confused uh, but peter is not giving any confuse he's giving a lot of reasons there are a lot of reasons he gives in, if you read from verses three to seven uh, why you should be building your hope we've just sort of went through it but he gives a lot of reasons about um, their salvation first john chapter 3 verse 2 refers to this when he says we know that when he appears about the revelation of jesus when he appears we will be like him because we will see him just as he is so all the the, the headaches the pains and the sorrows of life will be behind us as we see our lord jesus and be like him so this hope for jesus return will also have an effect on the present life correct as a believer for then he says uh, for, because in verse 3 john says and everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure so therefore peter is stating that this hope of faith is something that you can trust it is still and there is still hope to come <clears throat> the timing of the of it is at the revelation of jesus christ so what hope therefore is peter referring to in context many as i was saying christians have different views of what that looks like um, obviously we're not talking about a lottery hope <laughs> okay that will disappoint you 100 uh, percent the bible paul talks about hope he says there are three that remain faith faith hope and love um hope some 
so when we think about this, what why is hope so important? What what's the definition? Do you do you recall? Hope is linked, as I said, to truth and confidence in the person. Uh, and that links this being God being truthful to him, back to him, and our hope can be fixed on that that very essence of his character. That someone that you have total confidence that his word is trustworthy. Because we are we, we have been disappointed by religion and their ideas on hope, our hope. Uh, here's a quote by Darren Darren Hufford. It says, Hope was created for truth and nothing but truth. There is a hitch on the back of truth that we can we can connect our hope to that pulls us through to the challenges and circumstances we otherwise make it through. So hope is knowing, right? It's not a wishful thing. It is a confident expectation of something that is true, uh, not something that turns out to be false. So it's very important um, to have this hope. Um, and so where does the question then is, where does this hope come from? Well, our hope comes from God, does it not? Uh, that's what Romans fifteen thirteen says. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no greater, greater truth than to fix your hope on our Father himself. At one time we were, remember, without hope. And without God, but on Him we have set our hope. Ephesians chapter two, twelve, and Second Corinthians chapter one, nine to ten. First Peter, as we look back, he said this in First Peter one three: Praise to be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, so, the living hope. What is this living hope? It is the hope in Jesus has been risen uh, from the dead. Uh, and so we can accept then that our hope, our dreams are real. They won't be crushed in any way. That is our hope in the future where we get to meet him at the, at the revelation of Jesus. Uh, if you look now at the broader context in First Peter of hope, he says this in First Peter 3.15. Now, just keep that in mind, what he's been saying, right? First Peter 3.15, he says, Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. Have you ever been perplexed with this? You know, a lot of uh, believers aren't sure what this means, or they stumble, right? My old religion would have you preach the good news. You know, maybe you're at school. And you, I want to stand up for the national anthem. I want to sit down. And then someone says to you, why are you sitting down? Well, give a reason for the for your hope. What is your hope? So what is, what is the context, though, that they would be classifying Peter's words? It would be something to do with the kingdom, to the future, paradise earth, uh, where men will be living forever, those who are obedient to to the Lord, to God, to Jehovah. What is your uh, view of this hope? Do you have a similar idea? But in context, what is Peter saying? If we go back to chapter 1, what is he saying in context? So he, he's saying we shouldn't be really mixing our hope up with different beliefs. There is only one belief we have, and religion, unfortunately, weakens our hope. It doesn't strengthen our hope. Second Thessalonians 2.16, as it says, God our Father has given us good hope by grace. So, what is that? Well, Peter talked about it, right? You're a child of God. You were born from God, the God of hope. You have eternal life, this uh, Holy Spirit indwelling you. You're, all your sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. This is the hope that he's referring to. They're about to be persecuted, these uh, 
Christians. They are being persecuted. They're going to get into heavy persecution. So they, if they can stand up to this persecution, what would be the basis? He's saying because of who you are, your identity in Christ, your union with Christ. He's assuring them their union in Jesus. And being birthed by the Father is no small thing. It's a big deal. It should give you strong confidence for the Lord's future because the Lord's future is our future. God has chosen them. First Colossians 1.27, it says, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So you need to understand that Christ's future is my future. Christ's future is your future. Uh, this is what um, Charles Spurgeon said in the writing All of Grace. Dwell much upon this partnership with the Son of God, unto which you have been called. Remember what Peter said, that you were called by God? But you are called, for all your hope lies there. You can never be poor while Jesus is rich. Since you are in one firm with him, want can never assail you, since you are joint proprietor with him, who is possessor of heaven and earth. You can never fail, for though one of the partners in the firm is, a, is as poor as a church mouse, and in himself an utter bankrupt, who could not pay even a small amount of his heavy debts, yet... The other partner is inconceivably, inexhaustibly rich. In such partnership you are raised above the depression of the times, the, t the changes of the future and the shock of, all, of end all things. The Lord has called you into fellowship with his son Jesus Christ. And by that act and deed, he has put you into the place of infallible safeguard. Christ in you, therefore, you are eternally secure. And that's Peter's point, I believe. When you know the love of the Heavenly Father, when you are convinced of your union with Jesus, you will have no fear, no fear of falling or being cast away or uh, thinking you're going to lose your salvation at all. 1 Corinthians 1, 8 and 9, it says, he will also keep you firm to the end. Notice, he will keep you firm to the end, not you. This is very a key point. So that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus. God is faithful. So this is all about God's doing. This is why salvation is a gift. It's not for, from you. Jesus is eternally secure. Therefore, you are eternally secure. You can only lose your life, friend. If Jesus lost his life, that is the only way you can lose your life. But that's not going to happen. Second Thessalonians 2.16 says, Now may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father who has loved us and given us eternal comfort and good hope by grace. The comfort and hope religion gives you is fleeting and weak. I'm telling you, you know, if you can get your head out of religious uh, and men's doctrines and just go straight to the source, the apostles, and learn about grace, God's grace, the truth. The truth will set you free, friends. Uh, and it will give you true comfort, as it says there, eternal comfort, eternal rest. That's what it is, isn't it? And it's good. We talked about 1 John 3, 3 earlier. Those who have their hope fixed on Jesus return and becoming like him will pursue purity. And this is what he's getting at. You see, he's saying uh, in 1 Peter 13 to 16, because of this, because of your hope, because of the, you know, prepare your minds, you can be obedient. Uh, don't go back to your old ways because that person is dead, right? Don't live like the former way you used to live. Uh, but like the Holy One who called you, right? Now you see it? You see, sanctification, we are sanctified in our identity. We're okay. We're, we're justified. 
we have washed clean in our identity because we're obedient children. We're not disobedient children. But you'll find in the New Testament, there are behavioral behavior um, and attitude texts like this one. Just this little section here. Now it's talking about your actions, your attitude, your, your way of life. We're still being cleansed as it were, although we are cleansed fully, fully forgiven of all our sins. But the sanctifying part, if you like, is about our behavior. That's not going to change our, our position with the Father as a child of God. He's not going to reject us. No, He's birthed us. But we're still renewing the mind, right? Romans 12, 2. And that's why it says, prepare your minds, right? To the form, and do not be conformed to the former lust of your minds. <laughs> you see that? In your ignorance. We are no longer ignorant, but in the past we were ignorant and we, were, we had uh, bad desires. We were thinking, doing wrong things all the time. But now we're not having that. That's why we have this battle. Like Paul said in Romans 7, he has this battle. We have this battle because we're a new creation and our new creation, who we are in the spirit as a person at the core with a new heart, is battling some of the old tendencies, you know, that uh, haven't fully yet gone. <laughs> Some of those emotions sometimes are there. The, some of our bad patterns of behavior are still there. But we're, it doesn't mean that we're acting them out, but that we have this battle in our minds, right? And so I think that's what he's trying to say about this. Prepare yourself. This is a battle. You are in a battle, but your hope is real. You can't lose your salvation. And I think that's why he says this, uh, idea about as obedient children do not be conformed to your former lust. Obedient children or children of obedience, right? It's a description of their character. Um, and so I think this is very, very important, friends. A description of your character in Ephesians 2, 5 and 6 and Colossians 3, 6. It talks about the sons of disobedience that are non-believer. That's what a non-believer is. And disobedience to parents is a demonstration of this. Romans 1.30 and 2 Timothy 3.2. But here is a reference is this describing the character and relationship we have now with God. You see, we're, we're God's kids. We're dad's kids. So when people, you know, like uh, imagine being the, uh, the child of, the, of King, King Charles. All right, and uh, you're out in public or at home. Well, you would behave in a certain way, wouldn't you? Because you're a king's child. Well, same with us. That's what his point is. We're obedient to God because of the new person we are. We're, we are more prone to be obedient to him now than we were prior as unbelievers thinking, I have to do this with my will. My will that was not yet born of God. <laughs> it's impossible. <clears throat> so the knowledge there that Peter's just trying to, I guess, bring to their attention is, you know, you're not doing, you're not who you were in the past. You're a new person now. You're God's child now. He birthed you. Look what he's done to you. Right? You can take, you can do this. Right, rely on the Spirit. Look to Jesus, uh, and so I think that's very important. Grace calls a person to faith in Christ, and then justifies him by uh, imparting Christ's righteousness to him. So therefore, that's why it says the Holy One. Right, you are holy. Be holy. I'm going to go into more about that. And that is our identity. Our identity gets to his point is that we're holy or holiness is part of our identity. And it cannot be changed by God because he's decreed it for his for the gifts and call of and this call of God is our 
irrevocable. Can I say that? Irrevocable. And if you look at Romans 11.29, it tells you that. That is our identity, holiness. Our behavior, movements, are being sanctified as well. The person that's saved, a believer that is saved, uh, will, will learn to be a reflector because Christ is in them. So we're reflecting Jesus every day in our living. This is what the Apostle Paul had in, in mind when he said this in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ and it is no longer I who live. Notice it says it's not me who lives, but Christ lives in me and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. Love always hopes, friends. The God who sees the end from the beginning has rock solid hope in us. He birthed us. He guarant he's guaranteeing us. He's guaranteeing our future, our hope. And it's not based on your potential. It's not based on your potential. No. But this is the reality. It's not just something that, oh, maybe, could be. No. This is not nothing to do with that. This, nothing to do with that. This is as good as done because it's from the Father. Okay, this is the truth. And we have... Uh, dreams and uh, imaginations of being with the Lord and being in heaven. Well, they're coming from the Father. He's longing to see us as well. Don't heed the lies of religion that contradict the truth about your hope. Guard your hope. Guard your hope. Uh, and don't be seduced by the empty philosophies by religion and this world. Hebrews 10.23 says, Let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised is faithful. Hope is the fruit of love, so remain in his love and let nothing move you, friends. When life gives us a hard time, as it did the early believers, uh, wrap this hope around you to the one who is faithful and friends when we do that we won't be uh, easily turned around or or our faith will won't uh, be weakened in any way it'll be firm and fixed to the end like the apostle paul said of himself thanks for listening uh it is as i said to you i'm going to make this into a two-part and next part i want to talk about is holy what is holy you know we have to be holy so these are behavioral passages, this little one here. But you can see, you have to look backwards. And Peter's going backwards and forwards, right? He's presenting something new, but at the same time he's saying, because of this, right? Therefore, because of all these things, all these points, bang, 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 right? You know, this is why you can have confidence. This is a living hope. This is real. And you have a sure foundation for the future. Uh, so it's it's a great book loving doing it i hope you're enjoying it as well talk to you soon and then another episode on first peter see you guys take care